my wife, Judy, and I started this nursery uh, about 43, going on 43 years ago now today here in King. Our son has come on board for about the last 20 years, kind of a family run operation. We have about five additional employees, six at this time now, uh, on as full time. We pick up a few part timers in the busy type seasons, but uh, and still enjoy it. Uh, we are growing poinsettias this year. Uh, this year we've got 96 different types of poinsettias. Uh, we work with breeders on that. Uh, we've got four different companies or breeders. The furthest away is actually in Australia that has come up with some new poinsettias each year. This year we have 10 different types that are not on the market yet. Uh, the breeders will send us cuttings of those to help with the initial testing and growing of those poinsettias. Uh, it makes it interesting. We're one of about seven or eight commercial operations in the United States and Canada that get to do that uh, testing. It kind of tell everybody, it makes me feel like I'm back at NC State studying horticulture and helping with some new introductions of products. There are several universities around Ohio and others that help with the breeding and testing of these plants. Uh, I want to show you some pictures at this time. Uh, we started in uh, 76 uh, here in King and uh, started kind of in our backyard and uh, growing some basic trees and shrubs. Uh, right now, like I said, we're growing poinsettias this time of year. Uh, this was back in 1960, I mean, 1996 or 97, our first poinsettia crop was in 96 and that's me standing there that many years ago and you can see it was an individual just a small Quonset house where we grew probably about 1200 poinsettias that year. Uh, actually in uh, Raleigh where we were both in school studying horticulture and a little before that I had started a nursery there was a Mitchell's Flowers in Raleigh back in the late 60s, early 70s. And uh, when Judy and I met at State, we had a little rent house next to where I grew up. Uh, we would actually take stuff to the farmer's market there in Raleigh at the state fairgrounds that we were growing while we were still in school. So we were a licensed nursery back in the 70s, early 70s. This is my wife, Judy, several years ago, like I said, in that same greenhouse. Now this was geraniums growing in that greenhouse that year and hanging baskets. Uh, there's our son, Jay. When he was a little toddler, he stands next to the Mitchell's nursery truck and he started pulling weeds and that type thing as he was growing. So this is back in that same greenhouse now, several years ago. At that time, we were growing probably about six or seven different types of poinsettias. It was just one of those basic growing like so many growers do from year to year. Uh, this is a picture just taken now in the greenhouse. There's our son Jay on the right and me standing there and my wife Judy uh, in our greenhouse with the 12,000 plus poinsettias this year. There's Jay going through. He does a lot of the growing now. He's become real involved in the growing of the greenhouse crops here. Uh, we do so many different types that uh, when you have more than one variety, a half a dozen different types on the same bench and they don't grow at the same rate. Uh, it's a lot of time involved in making sure different varieties on the same bench don't get drowned or the ones that are growing vigorously get enough water and food. So it's, it takes a lot of time and patience and he's, he's got that. So. We grow them here. We start little rooted cuttings uh, about the second week of August. Uh, this looks like about week five or six. Uh, they're beginning to grow. They put on that new growth. Uh, 
the buds, you'll see several little shoots around the single stem of that poinsettia. And that's where the actual bracts or flowers will develop as it grows. This is just a picture of them probably going on about week six. They're just beginning to turn. There's some that are a little earlier in their bloom cycle than others. Uh, so this is probably right in there about the first week of November. Some of those early ones will begin to show just a little color. As they mature now, the bracts begin to color up and you can look at the center of that now and uh, you're not actually seeing the flower yet. The actual flower is a little cluster of yellow flowers in the center of that area where the colored bracts occur. The next week, it's amazing to me how fast and what the change can be just almost overnight from week to week after they start coloring. They, they really show. Here's a picture showing just a few different types that you can see across the entire greenhouse. Ooh, Here's a few of the newer varieties. Like I said, we are growing for four different breeders and uh, Jadora, soft pink. It's got a totally different shape. It's a kind of a slender brat or flower on those. Yeah. Cortez burgundy, now that's a deep, almost a, what I would call a purple flower on that. It's, it's become a favorite. Jubilee red is an early blooming red. You can see kind of in the center of those bracts, a little yellow flower beginning to appear on some of those. So mm -hmm. that's an actual flower come. There you go. Jadora hot pink. That's got the flower coming up. Now. Yeah. Yellow color. Red elf. Red elf is actually a smaller growing poinsettia that we grow a lot of those in the four inch pots instead of the six or eight inch pots. Okay, now, like I said, uh, we do some test growing and the ones that are numbers are ones that are not on the market yet. Uh, the breeders assign a number to those while they're in their laboratories being tested and they let us jump on board and actually grow some. Most of the time they will send one of their representatives by and see how the poinsettias that they're testing actually grow. So it's fun. Love you pink. That's a beautiful pink flower. Uh, a lot of people like other colors besides the reds. Orange glow. Now that has a beautiful orange color to the bright instead of the reds or whites. It, it's, it's a bright color to them. Uh, here's another one from Eki, is a, one of your breeders, number 55-16. That's one they're testing this year. But, uh, we get to help with that initial growing. Frozen white. That was one of the first true white poinsettias. Uh, I believe that was one from the breeder in Australia. In Austria. And uh, it is a white instead of the kind of a limey green to yellow color like the original whites were. So. Superba pink is another beautiful pink that's got a bright pink color to the bracts on it. Rose, winter rose is a smaller, tighter growing flower on it that uh, looks almost like the flower on a rose bush. So. Autumn leaves has the orangey, crusty type bloom on it that has uh, the fall color. So. Red glitter, there's about three different types of the red glitter from different breeders, but uh, that has a lot of variation in the bracts or in the leaf on it. You can see more of the white in some of the bracts. Uh, we pot probably 200 to 300 of that variety and probably two or three out of a hundred, a couple percent, will come out just a solid white plant instead of any red at all. So they, they can vary a lot from plant to plant. All right, well, that was just a few uh, 
types. I will show you just a couple more. Is there any questions at this time? Well, let's get up. We'll probably take some uh, questions when you're completed okay. there, but uh, we got a few of them, but we'll okay. we'll bring them up at the end. I'm just going to show you a couple uh, types. This is one from one of our breeders that we work with, SK180. Uh, this one is not on the market yet, and it's got a totally different shaped leaf or bracket. About four or five years ago, this same breeder came out with the red with that same shape of bright, and it's called the Christmas Mouse. So, <laughs> yeah, that, that was a good name. Yeah. <laughs> One of my favorites that is almost just a solid red is the one called Sky Star. And I don't know whether you can see this or not, but it'll have that red brack and then the little white, almost like stars on those bracks. It looks like somebody's just taking a little white glitter and popped it on. And there are several new varieties from a couple of different breeders that are in the pinks, whites, uh, light pink that the brack is just a totally different size. This is the Love You Pink. This is one like I showed you earlier and made the comment that this, instead of just speckled bracks, can have a lot of white and some of them will be a solid white and that's on the same plant. So they'll have a lot of variation. You won't find any two of these that'll be exactly a lot. And then we've got several different varieties of just your standard red. Some bloom a little earlier than others. Some have the dark red, some are brighter red. The size of the bracket or the flower can vary from type to type. So it's a, it's a real interesting type plant to grow. When you get these home now, uh, about the easiest thing to do as far as maintaining these, when you water, uh, usually about a cup to a cup and a half once a week is sufficient water. If you water them too much now, you can drown them, cause root disease in them and that type of thing. But uh, if your house is in that 65, 68 degree, uh, temperature than about once a week is a real good, simple way to keep them watered. Uh, I was just gonna uh, walk through and show you some different types also, just kind of what they're looking like. Uh, pink, uh, light pink, pink, white. Here's the orangey color that's on now. Back over this way, there's some Pink, Polly's pink, uh, several different types of reds. You can see the bright or the foliage on it. Some of them will have the jagged edge and some a smoother type leaf or edging on it. We grow them in all sizes from four inch. These are some 10 inch, some of the bigger plants that we grow. There are some new ones from all these different breeders now that'll have just the totally different colors in the bracts. As they mature, they'll have a variation of color. All, all types. We potted a little over 12,000 poinsettias this year. And uh, that's the most we've ever done. Several places have quit growing. Uh, there was one gentleman down towards uh, Kernersville that had been in it for years, and he is now out of it as of last year. Uh, 
there was a place in Danville, Virginia that we used to be in contact with on poinsettias and they quit growing them about three years ago. So there's still the demand for them. So we're increasing ours instead of decreasing. Still enjoy it. We'll go back this way then. Sit down, man. Let me show you just a brief growing of these. Uh, I don't know how well you can see, but over here with this picture, uh, you will see the little cuttings that are being potted into the dirt. And that's usually the second week of August. And you go on through, there's week two, week three, four, right in there on about week four, we will pinch the top out to help with the branching on them. Week six and seven. Now you're getting into uh, September there, first of October. There's about a three week period, the last week of September and the first couple of weeks of October to get your poinsettia to bloom. You need to be at nighttime in total darkness. Uh, they need about 13 to 14 hours of total darkness to get them to bloom for next year. Uh, two foot candles of light. If you can imagine two candles burning 12 inches away from that plant is enough light to cause the poinsettia to keep it from blooming for Christmas. Starting on November 27th through December 5th, December 10th, excuse me, we will have them set up with three of each kind at the end of the week. You can go through and vote on your favorite red and favorite novelty. We total all that up and send it back to the breeders. And if people like well enough, one of the ones that's a number this year and it grows well, then next year it may be on the market with the name. So. Far back, I guess, Don Masura asked, uh, how did the poinsettia become associated with Christmas? Does that go way back? Yeah, uh, 18, 1825, 24, 25, right in there. Uh, Poinsett was his name. Uh, brought the Poinsett first Poinsettas from uh, Mexico. He was the first gentleman to go to Mexico from the United States. And uh, he brought that back and was growing it actually in one of the greenhouses of the president at that time. So only into the mid 1900s, 1940 to 50, uh, one of the first breeders of the Poinsettia was the Ecky family out of uh, California and uh, they started pollinating and crossing and came out with colors besides the native red. Your retail prices uh, from the very small ones to the very big, can you give us a range? Uh, uh, four, in four inch or five dollars, six and a half inch or 975, eight inch or 20 Two twenty three. Don't hold me to that. And then I know the ten inch, the largest, are twenty nine. So. Okay. So where where do a lot of your plants at Mitchell's, the poinsettias, end up? Are they going to retail or grocery stores to Walmart? Where where are they headed? Uh, mostly in this area now. They go to uh, some of the garden centers, florists, as well as churches. Now churches will put in orders and we will wrap them and we can deliver them to the church or they can come by and pick them up. But there are still a lot of retail customers that walk in, pick a couple out, and sometimes they'll have them wrapped with paper and bow and sometimes just leave them in the pot and take them home. But uh, so probably about half and half, probably about 50% will go out from here retail. The largest place we grow sell to is my sister, Campbell Road Nursery there in Raleigh. I'll probably take her 1,800 to 2,000. So took, wow. her five, took her about 500 Tuesday of this week. She always wants her first load the week before Thanksgiving weekend. So. Well, I'll tell you, it is a, a beautiful thing. And, and uh, I know you guys have 
been featured in various media things. You've been on television. You've been uh, got national awards, I know, uh, for for your work there. What do you think has been the biggest challenge? And well, not only running a nursery, but specifically in, in the poinsettia business. Probably the biggest challenge in the poinsettia business is just getting them to grow correctly. It can right. be from year to year. Uh, some of the cuttings that we actually get in can vary in how healthy they are, how vigorous they are growing when we get them. And uh, that can vary from year to year. The amount of treatment we give them to keep them short and full instead of, if these had been allowed to grow with their natural growth habits, most of them would be up in the two to three foot of height already. So right. we try to keep them a little shorter and full. 